12 News Eye on Agriculture with Britton Rucker. A rally outside of Tyson Foods headquarters in Arkansas sends a powerful message. What Tyson is now saying. Plus, a day for just you swine producers. What's ahead at K State? And we do believe we're the only cranberry science class that's taught in our entire nation. Cranberry juice is a fall and winter staple, but one classroom in Wisconsin is taking the science of the cranberry harvest to a whole new level. That's ahead on Ion Agriculture. Everybody's excited about it, if, if we can get some. This rain, if we would happen to get some significant rain, would be really, really beneficial to a lot of people. Good evening and welcome into Ion Agriculture. I'm Britton Rucker. Farmers in South Central Kansas are soaking in this week some much needed rain at Stans Farms and El Dorado owner Gordon Stans says the rain not only helped his crops, but his friends that are ranchers who need it for their livestock. Stans says a couple of inches of rain would be a good start, but like most farmers, he's hoping for more to make up for the drought we've had this year. Kansas communities are struggling to conserve water, may soon see some relief as Governor Laura Kelly issues a statewide initiative to invest more than $1 million in water conservation projects. The initiative would advance the 2022 Kansas Water Plan, which is a five-year blueprint to ensure reliable water supply. Eligible applicants include public government entities, water-related districts, colleges, and agricultural commodities, among others. Applications submitted by December 29th will be considered for the initial round of funds. ADCO says it will be conducting a series of temporary furloughs at its plant in Heston, affecting around 900 employees. The company says this is not related to demand for its products, but is necessary as it invests in upgrades to the facility that the company says will ensure its long-term productivity. Agco says it expects to resume production in the first quarter of next year. The company says it will give impacted employees details on supplemental pay and retention bonuses. Bird flu is on the rise in one Midwestern state. The Iowa Department of Agriculture says two commercial turkey farms slaughtered 100,000 birds after positive cases at their facilities. Bird flu cases are on the rise this month in South Dakota, Minnesota, and Utah, also reporting new cases. Now, last year, the U.S. saw its deadliest outbreak ever, costing poultry producers nearly 59 million birds. It also caused a spike in egg and poultry prices at the grocery store. Tyson food workers and activists rallied outside the U.S. meat company's headquarters in Arkansas to protest to child labor and pushing for improved working conditions and processing plans. Activists and the Biden administration have pressured the U.S. meat industry to adopt safer labor policies after children hired by contractors were found doing dangerous jobs cleaning slaughterhouses. Tyson did not comment on child labor allegations. The USDA investing over $50 million in domestic fertilizer production expansion, doubling cropping support. 17 new projects will receive funding from a $900 million grant program created to expand U.S. fertilizer production in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This aims to enhance food production and lower costs for American families with significant increases in insured acres for second crops like grain sorghum and soybeans. Hey, and check this out. This was sent in to us by Jeff Cordell, a farmer in Harvey County. As you can see here, Casper the Ghost made a surprise appearance in the clouds out in one of his fields he farms. Now, you never know what you'll see on the farm when we're approaching the spooky season.